Lara and Crepo. What a fantastic game. I am joined by Mithy after Origin just wiped the floor with Copenhagen Wolves. 29 minutes. Talk to me about how the game was so convincingly won in your favor. Mm, I think we just killed them a bit too much and just ended fast, I guess. Why, why was it so easy to kill them too much? Because it just felt like you guys were all mechanically just outplaying the Copenhagen Wolves. I mean, apart from, I, I don't know if we mechanically outplayed them. I think we just like took trades at the better times because I think I missed like every hook this game, but it didn't really matter at the end of the day. So I think it's just like, for example, on bot lane we traded, but we had our jungler close. So we forced the Morgana to flash out to the river and our jungler was there. So we knew like the trade we were taking, you know, and they, they thought they were 2 v 2 ing but they weren't. And it's just things like this, you know. And Soas did a really good job. I think he carried the game on top lane. So, yeah. Well, it was great to see Soas on that Hecarim, a champion that we don't really associate with Soas, but it went well. Let's step away from this game. Talk about Origin. You guys are 4 and 0 in the summer split. You've got the lowest average game time. You've got very convincing victories. Is that something you were expecting coming into the summer split? Uh, no. I think we play better on stage than in scrims, so yeah, and I think we got a bit lucky sometimes, so yeah. Well, congratulations, thank you for also staying you know, humble when you talk about that. How is the transition? Are you guys, uh, I know you had a gaming house in Tenerife, I know you've been practicing there, are you fully living in Berlin? What's the adjustment like from the old house or to the new settings, for example? Well, we are still not fully adjusted. We, there's some, some issues going on with the housing, but uh, in terms of gameplay, in Tenerife we were playing with a 80 ping and like not so good screens and now we're playing with pretty good screens and 30 ping so there's quite a big difference in that regard even though people might not think about it and yeah overall it's just like from one day to another you basically become better so that also helps. Well congratulations I got one more question before we move up to the analyst desk. Next week you got two more games but it's week four that a lot of people are excited about Origin versus Fnatic. Obviously, because of the Soas and the Peke factor and the fact you guys are undefeated, does something like that affect you and your team's mindset at all, or is it just another game? Uh, I would be lying if I said it was just another game. I think Fnatic is obviously the strongest LCS team right now, so obviously we're going to try our best to win, but uh, yeah, you never know. It's a best of one. I think Fnatic is a very strong team, and uh, we will see how it goes. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you again. Congratulations on 4 and 0. Oh. So that wraps it up for us here in week two. We're going to head up to the analyst desk to close out the show. I just love the part where Miffy talks about playing on high ping. It's almost as if Origin played in a gravity chamber in <laughs> Challenger Series to get ready for LCS, and it, and it worked beautifully. Yeah, it looked like they were zero gravity in this game. I didn't note anything more down than whoa, because it just... <laughs> they were so much on the same page. It was quite incredible to see. Uh, just in general. Yeah, I mean, Origin, uh, Mithy said it, it didn't feel like they mechanically outplayed, but every single trade the Wolves wanted, there was always a Callista ult or a Thresh uh, Lantern or just something that Origin always had the number for Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, and when, it, when it's not necessarily mechanically, it's because they already know what's going to happen, yeah. right? Yeah, for them, it doesn't feel like flashing that bind mm -hmm. offensively is a mechanical outplay because it's so standard. They've done this before. They're so well-practiced. They're su such a well-oiled machine, and then everything... Uh, becomes quite normal, becomes quite average, but yeah, again, I can't stress it enough. Fantastic play by Origin. Yeah, it seems like they're playing on a cloud. Um, don't want to make this too hard for you guys, but this is interesting. I don't know if he's downplaying, but Fnatic is obviously the best team in Europe right now. If you go on maybe pure hard stats and maybe game time and the way they finish it, what, do you, what would you guys lean to? Ooh, uh, do you know what? I, I feel like Fnatic, especially in the games against Rocket yesterday, where Rocket started out pretty good, I, I, I mm. feel like they're so even, but Origin, Origin's wins are just so much more convincing. And that's not to say that they're better than Fnatic. I actually am going to cop out and say they're <laughs> even. No, I understand. <laughs> I think Fnatic will not crumble individually, matchup per matchup which doesn't allow Origin to snowball immediately. And then it comes down to macro-level play. And we've seen both teams are great at it, but you cannot underestimate a Fnatic when it comes to a slow and calculated game. So, yeah, I, w I would say even as well. And I'd be lying if I knew which team would come out ahead of there. Yeah, uh, we did almost not touch on the Copenhagen Wolves. They are going to have to bounce back, but honestly, it was a tough matchup for them versus OG in this one. We're going to take a look at the standings, though, here in the European LCS at the end of day two. And well, undefeated Fnatic and Origen at the top of the tables and the middle of the pack. Giants, H2K, uh, Unicorns of Love, Copenhagen Wolves, Elements Rocket, Gambit and SK still 
not with a victory on the board yet. Yeah, we're seeing a clear divide in the table. Top five teams and bottom five yet again. And it seems like a fight for third place at the moment in the European LCS. And then a fight to just avoid the relegations or, or play downs. And definitely don't want to get into that spot. You want that seventh place at least or make that sixth place into playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, though, that two of the longest standing European organizations are right down at the bottom of the table. This is where you have to dig deep as an organization like that and just seriously look at what's not working and try and fix it. They have the resources to do it. They just need to implement this game plan before it gets too late in the season. Yeah, definitely to work on that and see what they can do for the next weeks. Now, helping the Unicorns stay tied for the number three spot today was Vardax, who earned a total of seven kills, nine assists, and 40, 40, 434 CS against Rocket. That adds up to a total of almost 31 points, making him today fantasy LCS leader. Vardex racking up the points. And while it's sometimes hard to shine in a team where there's a lot of big damage dealers, we're good on him. It was a pretty long game, though. It was <laughs> quite a long game. But, you know, there was a lot of CS taken by everybody in that game. So I'm actually, I don't want to say I'm surprised by it being Vardex, but certainly after some of yesterday's high yeah. scoring games, 31 seems uh, a, a little bit lower than I was expecting. Yeah. Well, o Origin just decided they didn't need more fantasy yeah. points. They want <laughs> It was getting late here in Europe. They just want to get home early, rest up well, and get ready for next week. So they didn't grind out the game like they did yesterday. Yeah. Clean, swift finish. You heard it uh, from Stress Vardax, you know. Ramp up your game and get a little bit better at bowling while you're at it as well. Now, Vardax <laughs> wasn't the only one putting on their carry pants this week. We've chosen five OP players to highlight after doing more than their fair share in their team's last two games. We have five people that we particularly had an eye on. Starting off with Nils there. Um, it's very hard, right? This team is at the top of the tables. There's a lot of people that have done a lot, but definitely his progression yesterday, fantasy, M uh, fantasy leader, MVP last week, and another breakthrough performance here this week. Yeah, just fantastic stellar play. Shows that he can play safe in lane when he needs to, when he can play aggressive too. Synergizes with his jungler and overall really beautiful play. Having such a stellar KDA, yes, you're playing in a winning team, yes, it's easy to get those kills, but he barely dies. He always gets out and remember last week, those plays on Vayne toppling up, left, down, condemning into wall. Just mastery of the champions he's playing. Yeah, almost like putting on a show, but there's always someone who's there with him. That is Mithy, of course, his bottom lane partner who has mechanically shown us what he can do after being away from a while on several different champions. Yeah, I was going to say, pretty much behind every uh, good AD carry tends to be a uh, good or great support with that. And Mithy has come back to the scene and is looking on top form. You saw his kill participation stats there, 77% overall and man he's just been so good whether it's engaging or uh, peeling back and defending just so good by Mithy in all of Origins games. Absolutely Whew, what a highlight reel that is and those games were. Then our next OP player is a Giants player Whirlip just his growth through all and with the team has been quite impressive his games on Maokai and then today his beloved Jax as well. Yeah very strong performance on this Jax out from Whirlip and that's why people ban it against him, and I don't think Willib is going to get Jax all that often in the future. No, oh, that hurts. And Fox <laughs> knows it. Uh, our fourth OP player is Pepe Nero. 14, 5, and 19 in two games. Fantastic. He's always been the one we look at kind of for Giants, but even when the rest of the team is doing well, he is always there to count on. Yeah, ever since the addition of the new support God Threat, they seem to be thriving. A lot better team as our, our Giants became more of a team. Pepinero has always been solid, but they seem to be working with him even better. Beautiful pole composition coming out of them today and just synergized well with Audrey earlier and Whirlip carried. So multiple threats coming out of Giants and yeah, Pepinero is still so solid in the mid lane. Absolutely. Our last OP player is Odo Wamne coming out of H2K. That rumble, flame spitting, it was uh, on fire. Yeah, rumble two days in a row. Odo Wamne and I went back and forth on his champion pool and he has shut me up completely <laughs> here with uh, a complete departure in playstyle. Yeah, spitting so much fire, you might as well release a mixtape, Odo Wamne. <laughs> Such a great player today. I am fascinated by the Rumble. I want to see more. <laughs> I'm fascinated by your one-liners. That is amazing. Well, of those five, though, we had to choose an MVP. It wasn't easy. But for us, Whirlip stood above the rest, helping Giants rise victorious in both their games this week. We say it wasn't easy. He had a KDA of 11.3, dealing 72% uh, of his team's damage. We could have given it to Odawamne as well, but we see it in the context of the team as a whole. Yeah, definitely Odawamne close second. Just want to say that Odawamne uh, apparently in Romanian means oh god and rightfully chosen so but Whirlip fantastic performance I just like that he's he's pulling so much attention and that yet again allows Pepinero to shine in that Giants team allows Audrey to get some breathing room work together with their support and 
I really want to see more of Giants, see what they can do, and if World can continue this trend. Yeah. He had a good week now, hopefully next week too. Definitely, and see if the Giants can continue that upward curve. Now, of course, it wouldn't be the LCS without some big plays. Here's one from Advanati 2 k You're going to need more than four people to successfully gank Niels and Mithy. The escapes. Don't look too far ahead. There's teleport. Opening and Wolves are going to try to make that happen here. Ash Arrow comes out, but Young Buck on the teleport locks up Niels. Airwax is going to try to get at least something, but the are face you serious? No one dies on Origin. Not today. And look at the coach with Duck smiling and says, yes, that's why I picked Kalista Trash for my bot lane, because they get out of four-man gang squad. Crepo, you said that's become standard for Origin. Plays like that, two versus four, if that's standard for Origin, I want to see what's exceptional. Oh, man, week four. <laughs> week four, we keep building it up. One of those teams is going to drop a game, and it's gonna <laughs> still going to be epic, though. <laughs> Our second tweet is from at G Ward. Gambit play volleyball with Reckless, the hit by Diamond Prax, followed by the pass from Gosu, and dunked by Forgiven. Here is your LCS oh, big shot. play of the day. Find it on set. Has got that Seraph's embrace upgraded. Dragon Diamond Prox going in, Reckless hiding in play inside, gets caught, double knock up. Forgiven with the dunk! Let's see that again, Reckless going in, body slam. Almost wears off, nope, Cast comes in, almost wears off. Flash from Ed Edward, or from Gosu Pepper now. Really <laughs> want to highlight, just that little nudge, on the hunt. You should be a basketball commentator. That was quite impressive. Hey, last week you called me overrated. Now you're coming back with the compliments? I never do. I always have compliments for you. Anyway, with things wrapping up here in Berlin, it's time to look ahead to our next set of games, which pick up next Thursday as Oregon faces the Unicorns of Love. We have Rocket versus Giants in there, SK versus H2K, Fnatic Elements. Whew, what it spells out to me is a lot of teams that need to win or absolutely need to win on the board and some hard, hard matchup. Elements versus Fnatic. If there's ever a game to bounce back, it's that one, but chances might be slim. Yeah, bouncing back will be very hard. Fnatic looking in, in, in top form and definitely don't want to drop a game anymore. They just want to stay at the top of the table. And Elements, they have a lot of things to fix right now. Mm -hmm. And that middle of the table just uh, clash is getting more interesting as we progress. It truly is. Middle of the table is, is where so many, uh, so many people's eyes are on. I'm looking forward to a number of the games from next week, but I honestly think that Origin, they played so well and, and so conservative in keeping their lead. Unicorns, can they drag them into the madness? Conservative in keeping their lead? They're just yeah, building well, it, building it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're always building your lead, there's no chance to lose it. That's true. The action oh, begins true. on Thursday at 6 p.m. Central European Summertime, which works out to be 9 a.m. Pacific for you folks over in NA. Now, speaking of NA, the North American LCS gets back in gear tomorrow with a match between Enemy Esports and Team Liquid. We have TSM versus Team Impulse there as well. Dignitas, TDK, a lot of interesting matchups there as well. Yeah, Enemy Esports uh, with my boy Inox. Definitely looking forward to that one. Move to the mid lane. Really excited to see him. He's been performing. Pretty well so far. Yeah, the win last week as well, and a cool interview by him. So things get fired up over in Los Angeles on Friday, starting at 9 p.m. at Saturday, actually, starting at 9 p.m. Central European Summertime, noon Pacific, so don't miss it. And with that, it is time for us to close up shop here at the European LCS. I'd like to thank Stress for lending a hand on both desks this week. Thank and you, Stress. On behalf of myself, Crepo, and the rest of the LCS broadcast team, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you in solo queue. In gold. We're loading up for the first game of the day. Gambit at 0 and 3. Fnatic 3 and 0. Dragon. And the going in. Reckless hiding in play inside. Gets caught. Double knock up. Forgiven with the dunk. Headbutts him to Ooh. another tunnel. Small mistake, but it's very impactful. Forgiven gets taken down. Gambit have lost all of their games, but Fnatic have won them all. That's a very good equalizer once more from Freddy and Whirlin. Has already got himself a kill. Taken Fox out. That was a great teleport. Everyone is going to die. <laughs> Giants, three and one in the summer split. Oh, they're out of position. Oh, uh, they are. Kick is oh, not hit just yet. He's managed to get saved for a few seconds longer. I got the blood of Lucia. Lucia, 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 that's all, that's all, that's all. Lucia, 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 The crowd erupts. Unicorns of love, unicorns of life. There's snow stop, snow stop. I want snow stop. Snow stop, I'm a cowboy. You have to be a snow stop. Doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Baby, baby. Why can't we just stay together? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby, baby. Hold on,
Kumne, Lulex in the front line, Dexter, the barrel, Krogan, he's going down, pulled back in by the shockwave, as Oluwande is still alive in all of this, and a methodical and surgical dismantling of elements is completed. Ash Arrow comes out, but Young Buck on the teleport locks up Niels. Airwax is going to try to get at least something, but the Are base you serious? Origin don't need to be worried about that at all. Nexus is going down. 